गुड डे स्टूडेंट्स आई एम माधवी दोषी फ्रॉम श्री टी पी भाटिया जूनियर कॉलेज ऑफ साइंस डिपार्टमेंट ऑफ मैथमेटिक्स आई होप यू ऑल आर सेफ एंड साउंड एंड कीपिंग गुड हेल्थ एंड हेल्पिंग योर पेरेंट्स इन ऑल पॉसिबल वे ड्यूरिंग दिस लॉकडाउन पीरियड यू ऑल शुड बी वेरी प्रोडक्टिव एंड यूटिलाइज योर प्रेशियस टाइम सो हेंस फोर्थ आई ब्रिंग यू न्यू सेक्शन इन द प्रोसेस ऑफ लर्निंग एंड एनहैंसिंग योर स्किल्स इन मैथमेटिक्स so once again we are going to commence a new topic of standard 12 called matrices but before we start this topic let us summarize a few basic concepts required to understand this topic after we do the basic concepts we are going to post you an assignment in terms of mcqs and later on we'll be having a discussion of this mcqs also so i hope you enjoy this journey of learning with me and waiting with full enthusiasm to join me in the process of learning matrices so let's begin with the topic called matrices what is a matrix the theory of matrices was developed by a mathematician arthur kelly matrices are useful in expressing numerical information in compact form hence in economics statistics and computer science they are essential so now let us define what is a matrix a rectangular arrangement of mn numbers in m rows and n columns enclosed in square or round bracket is called a matrix of order m by n in general matrices are denoted by capital letters a b c and so on and are classified by its dimensions for example let's take a matrix of order m by n here the matrix is enclosed in square bracket and the elements are a11 a12 a13 and so on a21 a22 a23 and so on in this way the last row will be am1 am2 am3 and so on to amn or in short we can write it as a is equals to aij enclosed in a square bracket base m into n where the first suffix i is the number of rows in which aij lies second second suffix j is the number of columns in which the element aij lies therefore a matrix with m rows and n columns is called m by n matrix and the size of this matrix is m into n m by n is also known as the order of the matrix let us take the examples for matrices here a is a matrix having two rows and three columns therefore we write the order of the matrix as 2 by 3 as a subscript near the matrix here the elements are a i j where i denotes the number of rows and j denotes the number of columns so therefore a11 which is the element in first row and first column is equals to 1 1 is an element that is in the first row and first column therefore it is also known as a11 therefore what is the element as a22 a22 is an element in second row and second column which is equals to 5 here the number of rows and the number of columns are not equal rows are not equal to columns therefore this is an example for rectangular matrix rectangular matrix let us take another example b b is having three rows and three columns therefore the order of the matrix is 3 by 3 the elements are arranged in rows and columns so which element is a23 a23 is an element in second row and third column so the value of that element is 7 so a23 is 7 which element is a31 a31 is an element in third row and one first column therefore its value is equals to 0 here the number of rows is equals to number of columns therefore therefore this is an example for square matrix
let's learn about different types of matrices. Yes, the first one is row matrix. A matrix having only one row is called a row matrix. It is of the order 1 by n, where n is the number of columns. Here, n will be greater than or equal to 1. So, row matrix has only one row, but n number of columns. Example, minus 1, 2 is a matrix. Its order is 1 by 2. That is, it is one row and two columns. Another example is 0, minus 3, 5. That is, it is a matrix of order 1 by 3. That means it has one row and three columns. Column matrix. A matrix having only one column is called a column matrix. It is of the order M by 1 where M is number of rows. Here, M is greater than or equal to 1. It means it has M rows and one column only. For example, matrix 1, 0. It has two rows and one column. And another example is matrix 5, minus 9, minus 3. It has three rows and one column. 0 or null matrix. A matrix in which every element is 0 is called as a 0 matrix or null matrix. It is denoted by O. For example, O is a 3 by 3 matrix where all the elements are 0. Another example is O, a 3 by 2 matrix where all the elements are 0. Square matrix. We have already dealt with square matrix in the examples above. Let's revise again. A matrix with equal number of rows and columns is called a square matrix. For example, a is a 3 by 3 matrix which has 3 rows and 3 columns. C is a 2 by 2 matrix which has 2 rows and 2 columns. Diagonal matrix. A square matrix in which every non-diagonal element is 0 is called a diagonal matrix. Therefore, in the diagonal, at least one of the elements should be non-zero. For example, in the matrix A, the diagonal elements are 5, 0, 9 and all the non-diagonal elements are zeros. And in the matrix B, the diagonal elements are minus 1, minus 5 and all the non-diagonal elements are zeros. Scalar matrix. A diagonal matrix in which all the diagonal elements are same is called a scalar matrix. For example, in the matrix A, all the diagonal elements are 5, whereas all the non-diagonal elements are zeros. And in the matrix B, all the diagonal elements are minus 2 and all the non-diagonal elements are 0. So, we can say that all the scalar matrix are diagonal matrix. But all the diagonal matrix need not be scalar matrix. Unit or identity matrix. A scalar matrix in which all the diagonal elements are 1 or unity is called an unit matrix or an identity matrix. An identity matrix is a square matrix of order n and it is also denoted by i n. For example, i 3 is a 3 by 3 unit matrix where all the diagonal elements are 1 and non-diagonal elements are 0. Similarly, I2 is a 2 by 2 unit matrix where all the diagonal elements are 1 and non-diagonal elements are 0. So, identity matrix is a scalar matrix, but every scalar matrix need not be an identity matrix. However, a scalar matrix is a scalar multiple of identity matrix. Upper triangular matrix. A square matrix in which every element below the diagonal is 0 is called an upper triangular matrix. In matrix A, where the elements are A, I, J and the order of the matrix is M by N is an upper triangular if all A, I, J's is equals to 0 for all I greater than J. That is, where the number of rows is greater than number of columns. For example, in the matrix A, the diagonal elements are 4, 0, 9, whereas below the diagonal, all the elements are 0. 
and in another example that is the matrix B, the diagonal elements are minus 3, 8 and below the diagonal the element is 0 are the upper triangular matrices. Lower triangular matrix, a square matrix in which every element above the diagonal is 0 is called a lower triangular matrix. For example, in the matrix A where the elements are A, I, J and the order of the matrix is M by N is lower triangular if A, I, J is equals to 0 for all I less than J. That is, when the number of rows is less than number of column, all the elements are 0. For example, in the matrix A which is of the order 3 by 3, the diagonal elements are 2, 1, 9 and above the diagonal all the elements are 0 and in the matrix B the diagonal elements are 7, 3 and above the diagonal the element is 0 and the matrix B is of order 2 by 2. Both A and B are lower triangular matrices. Triangular matrix. A square matrix is called a triangular matrix if it is both an upper triangular or a lower triangular matrix. For example, the diagonal, scalar, unit and null matrices are all triangular matrices. Symmetric matrix. A square matrix A where the elements are A, I, J and the order of the matrix is M by N in which A, I, J is equals to A, J, I for all I and J. That is, I is the number of rows and J is the number of columns and at least one of the diagonal elements is non-zero is called a symmetric matrix. For example, in the matrix B, the elements are minus 3, 1, 1, 8. It is of the order 2 by 2 and here A12 is same as A21 which is equals to 1. Another matrix C is of the order 3 by 3. Here A12 is same as A21. A13 is same as A31, A23 is same as A32 are the examples for symmetric matrix. Skew symmetric matrix. A square matrix A where the elements are A, I, J and the order of the matrix is M by N and in which A, I, J is equals to minus A, J, I for all I and J and all the diagonal elements that is A, I, I's are equal to 0 is called a skew symmetric matrix. That is, in a skew symmetric matrix, each diagonal element is 0. For example, in the matrix A, which is of the order 2 by 2, the diagonal elements are 0 and A12 is equals to minus A21. And in the matrix B, which is of the order 3 by 3, the diagonal elements are all 0 and a12 is equals to minus A21, A13 is equals to minus A31, A23 is equals to minus A32. Both A and B are the examples for skew symmetric matrix. Students, let us learn about a determinant of a matrix. Determinant of a matrix is defined only for a square matrix. If A is a square matrix, then the same arrangement of the element of A also gives us a determinant by replacing square brackets by vertical bars. It is denoted by determinant of A or det A. For example, if A is a matrix of order 2 by 2 and the elements are 1, 3, minus 5, 4, then determinant of A is equals to replace the square bracket with two vertical bars and the elements are 1, 3, minus 5, 4, then it is equals to the cross multiply the elements and subtract 1 from another that is 1 into 4 minus of 3 into minus 5 which is equals to 4 minus of minus 15 that is 4 plus 15 is equals to 19. Students let us take an example to find a determinant of a 3 by 3 matrix. So replace the square bracket with the two vertical bars to find the determinant of B. Here the sign taken are plus minus plus for the first row or you can also take the first column to calculate the determinant and the same convenient uh, signs plus minus plus. So take the first row first column element that is 1, delete the row and column in which the first row first column element that is A11 is present and 
find the determinant of the remaining elements 1 3 0 1. Take the next sign as minus then take the next element of the first row that is 1 delete the row and column in which this, this second element is present and take the determinant of the remaining elements that is 0 3 0 1. Then take the sign plus and the third element of the first row which is minus 2 and delete the row and column in which the third element is present that is and find a determinant of the remaining elements that is 0 1 0 0. So, in this way I put it as plus 1 determinant of 1 3 0 1 minus 1 plus determ into determinant of 0 3 0 1 plus minus 2 into determinant of 0 1 0 1. You all can find easily the determinant of 2 by 2 matrix. Just cross multiply and subtract from one another. So, it is 1 into 1 minus 0 into 3. So, you get 1 and 1 into 1 is 1. Here it is minus 1, minus 1 into 0 minus 3 that is 0. So, minus 1 into 0 is 0, minus 2 into 0 minus uh, 1 into 0 is 0. So, it is also 0. So, the answer for the determinant is 1. In this way, we can find a determinant for 3 by 3 matrix. Singular matrix. A square matrix A is said to be singular matrix if determinant of A is equals to 0. Otherwise, it is said to be a non-singular matrix. For example, in the matrix B, which is of the order 3 by 3, and the elements of the matrix are 2, 3, 4, 3, 4, 5, and 4, 5, 6, the determinant of the matrix B is obtained as the product of first element A11 into determinant of those elements obtained by deleting the row and columns in which the first element is present minus second element that is A12 into the determinant of those elements uh, obtained by deleting the row and column in which the A12 is present plus A13 into the determinant of those, elem those elements obtained by deleting the row and column in which the A13 is present. For example, determinant of B is 2 into determinant of 4, 5, 5, 6 obtained by deleting the row and column in which the 2 is present minus 3 into the determinant of 3, 5, 4, 6 obtained by deleting the row and column in which the 3 was present plus 4 into the determinant of 3, 4, 4, 5 obtained by deleting the row and column in which the 4 is present. After calculation, it is the value of the determinant is given as 0. That is, if the determinant of B is equals to 0, then B is a singular matrix. If suppose if the determinant of B is not equal to 0, then it would be non-singular matrix and therefore, if the matrix is non-singular, then its inverse will exist. So, students up till now we have revised the different types of matrices. Now, let us learn something more in matrices that is algebra of matrices. In algebra of matrices, we are going to learn about equality of matrices, multiplication of a matrix by a scalar, addition of matrices and multiplication of two matrices. So, now let us revise each one by one. Equality of matrices. Two matrices A and B are said to be equal if order of A is equal to order of B and corresponding elements of A and B are same. That is, if Aij is equal to Bij for all Ij and symbolically it is written as A equals to B. The next unit is multiplication of a matrix by a scalar. If A is any matrix and K is a scalar, then a matrix obtained by multiplying each element of A by a scalar K is called a scalar multiple of the given matrix A and is denoted by Ka. Thus, if A is a Aij matrix of order M by N and K is any scalar, then Ka is equal to Kaij of order M by N. Here, the order of the matrix A and Ka are same. Therefore, we have already defined scalar matrix. They are none other than the scalar multiple of identity matrix. Students, let's learn how to multiply a matrix with a scalar. 
Here the scalar value is k which is equals to half and the matrix A is of the order 3 by 2. So when I multiply the matrix A with k, so I get ka. So it is equal to half into the matrix. Here the procedure is multiply each element of the matrix with the scalar. So we get 1 into half, 2 into half, 4 into half, 6 into half, 2 into half, 8 into half. So my resultant matrix is half, 1, 2, 3, 1 and 4. This is how we multiply a matrix with a scalar. The third unit in the algebra of matrices is addition of two matrices. If A and B are two matrices of same order, the addition is denoted by A plus B and it is a matrix obtained by adding the corresponding elements of A and B. Note, A plus B is possible only when A and B are of same order. A plus B also have the same order as A and B. Thus, if A is a AIJ, of order m by n and b is a bij matrix of order m by n then a plus b is equal to aij plus bij of order m by n students let's learn how to add two matrices here i have taken matrix a of order 2 by 2 and matrix b is also of order 2 by 2 for addition of two matrices the order of the matrix should be same Therefore, to add A and B, I write it as A plus B and again I put the same matrix in this way plus 2, 3, 1, 5. Remember the order of the two matrices should be same. Now, for addition of two matrices, add the corresponding elements. That is A11 is added to B11. So, 1 plus 2. A12 is added to B12. So, 2 plus 3 and so on. So, minus 1 plus 1, 4 plus 5. The resultant matrix is 3, 5, 0 and 9. In this way, we can add two matrices. Remember, the order of the matrix should be same and the corresponding elements has to be added. Note, if A and B are two matrices of the same order, then subtraction of the two matrices is defined as A minus B which is equals to A plus of minus B where minus B is a negative matrix of B. Let's learn about the subtraction of two matrices. Here the matrix A is of order 2 by 2 and matrix B is also of order 2 by 2. So A minus B can be written as it is A plus of minus B where minus B is a negative matrix of B. To obtain minus b, multiply the matrix b with minus 1. So we get minus b as minus 2, minus 1, 1, 4. So a minus b is written as a plus of minus b. So here again I repeat the matrices 5, 2, 2 minus 3 plus I will put a negative matrix minus b. And follow the same procedure as addition of matrices that is adding the corresponding elements. So here I get the answer as 5 plus of minus 2, 2 plus of minus 1, 2 plus 1, minus 3 plus 4. So my resultant matrix will have the value as 5 minus 2, 2 minus 1, 3, 1. So the answer is 3, 1, 3, 1. This is how we do the subtraction of matrices. Multiplication of two matrices. Two matrices A and B are said to be comfortable for the product AB if the number of columns in A is equals to number of rows in B. That is, if A is of order M by N, B should be of order N by P. In this case, the product AB is a matrix defined as follows. A of order M by N into B of order N by P will give you the resultant matrix C of order M by P. 
Let us take the example for multiplication of two matrices. Here I have taken the matrix A which is of order 2 by 3 and matrix B which is of order 3 by 2. The most important requirement for the product of two matrices is that the number of columns of the first matrix should be equal to number of rows of the second matrix. Here the number of columns in matrix A is 3 and in matrix B the number of rows is also equal to 3. So both are equal so matrix multiplication is comfortable. So let us do the multiplication. So AB I have written down the matrix. Now how to do the multiplication? Take the first row of the first matrix and the first column of the second matrix. Multiply the corresponding elements and then add them up. So I am taking the first row with the first column. So what will I get at? Get as so I am multiplying the corresponding elements 1 into 2 plus 2 into 1 plus 3 into 0. This is over with first row and first column. Now let us take the first row and second column. So it is 1 into 1 plus 2 into 0 plus 3 into 1. I have multiplied the corresponding elements and have then added them up. This is over with first row of the first matrix and the two columns of the second matrix. The same procedure is with the second row of the first matrix and the remaining two columns of the second matrix. So it is 1 into 2 plus 1 into 1 plus 1 into 0 that is I have multiplied the second row of the first matrix with the first column of the second matrix. Same way second row of the sec first matrix with the second column of the second matrix. So it is 1 into 1 plus 1 into 0 plus 1 into 1. Now let us do the calculation. So we have 2 plus 2 plus 0, 1 plus 0 plus 3, 2 plus 1 plus 0, 1 plus 0 plus 1. So my resultant answer is 4, 4, 3, 2. Look at the order of the resultant matrix. It is of the order 2 by 2. Here it is the number of rows of the first matrix into number of columns of the second matrix. So AB will have the resultant, AB the resultant matrix will have the order 2 by 2. Note, if AB exists, BA may or may not exist. If the product BA exists, then AB may or may not exist. If the product AB and BA both exist, they may not be equal. What is an inverse of a matrix? The inverse of an n by n matrix A is also an n by n matrix B where the product of the two matrices A and B is also equal to the product of two matrices B and A and is equal to I n where I n is an identity matrix of order n. Please note not all matrices have inverses. Singular matrices do not have inverses. We have revised what are singular matrices. They are the matrices whose determinant is equals to 0. So if a matrix has an inverse then it is called invertible. What are minors and cofactors of a matrix? If A is a square matrix then the minor of the entry Aij is denoted by capital Mij and is defined to be the determinant of the sub matrix that remains after the ith row and the jth column are deleted from A. The number minus 1 raised to i plus j into Mij is denoted by Cij or Aij and is called the cofactor of the entry Aij. What are the minors of the entry Aij of the matrix A. It is denoted by capital Mij. It is defined to be the determinant of the sub matrix that remains after the ith row and jth column are deleted from A. Let us take an example to find the minors. So the example is find the minor of entry A11 and A22 given that A is a matrix of order 2 by 2 and the elements are 3 minus 1, 2 minus 1. M11 is a minor for A11 obtained by
by deleting the row and column in which a11 is present and taking the res taking the determinant of the resulting element here the resulting element is minus 1 after deleting the row and column in which a11 is present so the determinant of minus 1 is minus 1 m22 is a minor for a22 obtained by deleting the row and column in which a22 is present and taking the determinant of the remaining element. Here the remaining element is 3. So the determinant of 3 is 3. So the minor m22 is 3. Now let us see how to find the cofactors of the entry aij. The cofactors are denoted by cij or sometimes aij. So cij is equals to minus 1 raised to i plus j into mij where i and j denotes the number of rows and number of columns. For example, c11 is equals to minus 1 raised to 1 plus 1 into m11. Here 11 denotes the element in first row and first column. c12 is equals to minus 1 raised to 1 plus 2 into m12 where 1, 2 denotes the element in first row and second column and all mijs are here the minors. Here in cofactors, the minus 1 raised to i plus j determines the sign for the cofactors. If minus 1 raised to even power, then you have 1 into the minor and if you have minus 1 raised to odd power, then you have minus 1 into the minor. Students, let us learn how to find the minors and cofactors of a matrix. What is a minor? Given a matrix A, a minor is a determinant of any square submatrix of A. Let us find the minors for the following matrix A, which is of order 2 by 2. So, minors are denoted by Mij. So, I am finding out the minors of each and every element of matrix A. So, I am finding the minor of A11. That is the element present in first row and first column. It is M11. To obtain M11, delete the row and column in which A11 is present. And the answer is the leftover element that is 3. So M11 is 3. M12 is to find the minor of A12 by deleting the row and column in which 2 is present. That is A12 is present. So leftover element is 1. So my M12 is 1. Next we find for second row first column element that is M21. To find the minor for A21, delete the row and column in which A21 is present. My leftover element is 2. M22 is to find the minor for A22. Delete the row and column in which A22 is present. So my leftover element is 1. Next things, we find the cofactors of the matrix A. The formula to find the cofactors is Aij is equals to minus 1 raised to i plus j into Mij. So, we will find the cofactors for each and every element of A. So, A11 is minus 1 raised to 1 plus 1 into M11 where M11 is a minor for A11. So, it is minus 1 square into 3. Minus 1 square is 1, 1 into 3 is 3. A12 is minus 1 raised to i is 1 and j is 2. 1 plus 2 into m12. So my answer is minus 1 cube and m12 is 1. So it is minus 1. A21 is minus 1 raised to 2 plus 1 into m21. Here i is 2 and j is 1. That's why it is minus 1 raised to 2 plus 1 into m21. So minus 1 cube into m21 is 2. So my answer is minus 2. a22 is equals to minus 1 raised to 2 plus 2 into m22. So my answer is minus 1 raised to 4. My m22 is 1 and minus 1 raised to 4 is 1. So 1 into 1 is 1. Now, I put this cofactor elements in a matrix form. It is also known as cofactor matrix.
which is Aij. So my Aij is minus 1 raised to i plus j into Mij. And the cofactor matrix is A11, A12, A21, A22. So my answer is A11 is 3, A12 is minus 1, a21 is minus 2, A22 is 1. Transpose of a matrix. The matrix obtained by interchanging rows and columns of a matrix is known as transpose of the matrix. For example, if A is a matrix of order 3 by 2, then after interchanging the rows and columns, the A transpose will have a new matrix of order 2 by 3. Here, the rows have become the columns and the columns have become rows. In A, the number of rows were 3 and the column were 2, whereas in matrix A transpose, the number of rows are 2 and the columns are 3. That is, we obtain this by interchanging the elements in rows and columns. And one more beautiful concept is, A transpose of transpose is your original A. Now, let us learn how to find the inverse of a matrix. By adjoint method. My A inverse is 1 upon determinant of A into adjoint of A. What is adjoint of A? Adjoint of A is my cofactor trans cofactor matrix and taking the transpose of the cofactor matrix. So it is cofactor matrix transpose. So for the above sum A, for the exa example A which is 1, 2, 1, 3, my cofactor matrix is a i j which is equals to 3 minus 1 minus 2 1 and my determinant of a that is determinant of 1 2 1 3 is 3 1 1 into 3 minus 2 into 1 which is 3 minus 2 which is equals to 1 and it is not equal to 0 therefore if the determinant of a is not equal to 0 a inverse exists. Therefore, the value for A inverse is 1 upon determinant of A into adjoint of A. So, it is 1 upon determinant of A is 1 and my adjoint of A is 3 minus 1 minus 2 1. Therefore, my A inverse is 3 minus 1 minus 2 1. This is the answer for A inverse. Did you know we can find A inverse for 2 by 2 matrix in a shortcut way? That is, if A is having elements A, B, C, D, then A inverse is 1 upon determinant of A into the matrix D minus B minus C, A, where D and A are obtained by interchanging the elements in the diagonal of the matrix and Minus B and minus C are the elements by taking negative of the non-diagonal elements. Let us take for example, if B is a matrix of order 2 by 2 with elements 2, 4, 1, 3, then B inverse is 1 upon determinant of B. Determinant of B is 2 into 3 minus 1 into 4, that is 6 minus 4 which is 2. And the new matrix is 3 minus 4 minus 1, 2, where 3 and 2 are the elements interchanged in the diagonal of the original matrix, and minus 4 and minus 1 are the negative elements of the non diagonal element. Thank you. So, students, thank you for being with me in the section 2 Introduction of Matrices. 
Here, I've introduced a small concept called A inverse by adjoint method for 2x2 matrices. Later on, we are going to be studying A inverse for 3x3 matrices also in our ongoing session. So students, I hope you will revise the concepts thoroughly and be ready to prepare for your MCQs which you are going to get as an assignment. And we will be having a discussion on these MCQs also. So students, I am waiting for you all to join me in the MCQ section. Till then, be happy, be safe. So I take your leave for now.